This is Twit. Mudge. Oy. Mudge. So uh, I remember when Twitter hired Mudge. His uh, real name is Peter Zatko. Uh, as their security chief, and it was kind of an interesting story because Mudge was widely known as a as a hacker, kind of a white hat, good guy hacker. Uh, they hired him uh, in the face of massive security problems. You may remember breaches and so forth. And uh, I think a lot of people said, "Yeah, finally they got somebody who knows what he's doing in there. This will be good." Six months later, he's gone. After Jack left, After Barag fired him. Uh, yeah, but he fired him for not doing anything. I mean, it was it was kind of fired for cause. It sounded like. Um, well, both things in this story can be true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, we're out. gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I'm just. I want to. I want you to know the. What led up to it, the backstory. Uh, so he was fired, uh, it's about six months ago now. Um, I think, I'm sorry, he was two years at Twitter, I think, and then fired six well, months ago. Was it one year? Oh, was okay. it, a one, it wasn't long. It wasn't long. It wasn't long. Uh, six months later, he files what he calls a whistleblower uh, complaint against Twitter. Now, I don't know. Is it a whistleblower if you don't work for them and they can't... Rep There's no, no... Well, he used the same... He used the same organization for help that helped Haugen. Okay. So it's a it's a whistleblower complaint. Uh, the Washington Post has the exclusive because they got the uh, complaint itself. The most uh, serious Pardon. accusation, according to the WAPO, is that Twitter violated the terms of a uh, of an 11-year-old consent decree with the FTC who said, you know, uh, you, <laughs> it's a weird consent decree. You ha for, for the next 20 years, <laughs> it said, this was in uh, 2010, so that would have gone through 2030, you uh, will be barred from misleading consumers. <laughs> After 20 years, go ahead, but for the next 20 <laughs> years, you'll be barred from misleading consumers about the extent to which you protect security, privacy, and confidentiality of non-public consumer information. Uh, one of Mudge's complaints, or uh, allegations, I guess is what I probably should call them, is mm -hmm. that Twitter collecting phone numbers, as, as we've kind of known about, Facebook was accused of doing this too, collecting phone numbers and uh, real names and other things, ostensibly for account recovery, was actually using that to sell ads. Um, and we knew that from a couple months ago. Right. Uh, okay. Mudge also, I'm going to call him Mudge instead of Zatko because I think Mudge, he's better known as Mudge, right? Uh, he, uh, says that he... That kind of makes him more cuddly. I don't know. Uh, Zatko, I know. Pita Zatko doesn't, yeah. He was a, uh, open source programmer, a hacker, a writer, pretty well known in the security community. He, uh, founded the Cult of the Dead Cow and was in Loft, which did a lot of cracking uh, stuff. So he was a very well-known guy. He actually, in uh, 2010, started to work at DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Project Administration, the government position. He oversaw cybersecurity. He worked for Google after three years in their Advanced Technology and Products Division. In 2020, he was hired uh, for head of, as head of security uh, at Twitter. There's uh, a hilarious picture of Mudge... Uh, uh, testifying before Congress. Oh, hell, I just lost it. In 98, uh, so, yeah, as, as one yeah, of seven and so lost his, his members. Name, his yeah. name tag says Mudge right. next to a guy called Kingpin. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just it's You just can hilarious. be sure Congress took that seriously. Yeah. Um, he met with Bill Clinton at a security summit. Uh, he, you know, so he was a well-respected guy. He was a division scientist at BBN where the internet was invented. So he was, you know, he's pretty well-known. Uh, he was sought out by Jack Dorsey, who was the CEO at the time, to lead the company's information security approach after a, a big hack in July of 2020. Uh, you may remember that hack. A lot of big-name accounts were co-opted, right? Uh, was, was that the one? Yeah. Was, that was, yeah. Yeah. It was the one, I can't remember, but it was all was those famous... Was this the one that led to the Obama? death of the... No, no, it was the Bitcoin one where... Uh, oh, okay. Apple oh, said, right. we're giving back to our community. We support Bitcoin. Right. Okay. Send All Bitcoin sent to the address below will be sent back to you doubled. And Elon <laughs> tweeted it. Apple oh, yeah. tweeted A lot of people 
tweeted this is a this was a that was bad and, and Twitter some, a few idiots did it but I think more for the yucks than anything else. yeah but it it was bad I mean Bill Bill Clinton I think Barack Obama Joe Biden Bill Gates Jeff Bezos Mr Beast Michael Bloomberg Warren Buffett Floyd oh, Mayweather Jr Kim Kardashian and Kanye West all all their accounts had been compromised and tweeted that Bitcoin thing Uber Cash App Apple. Uh, Twitter said uh, that 130 accounts were affected, but only 45 were actually tweeted out that scam. And I, I th as I remember, they think it was because uh, Mudge was able to use Slack. Not Mudge, the bad guys. Mudge came to save them, save the day. Were you able to get into a Slack account and get the credentials? Remember we talked about this. Get yeah. the credentials for an administrative account, which allowed them to do this. Anyway, uh, it was such a black mark that uh, Twitter hired him. But then, you know, when he was let go, it was because he didn't do a good job. He was, you know, he was he was causing problems. Are they public um, about that, or that's come out now in his allegations? Of, oh, I don't think it's a good public question. about why they fired him. I don't remember that. Let me see if I can find that story. Because there were two executives fired at the same time. Yeah. Let me just Google Twitter file fire fires mudge. <laughs> uh, yeah, all those stories are the current story, unfortunately. Oh, here it is. Yeah, Twitter so shakes up its security team. Uh, and this was the story we read in January of this year on this show, because it's it's been visited already. Uh, Peter Zacco, head of security, no longer at the company Twitter confirmed. Chief Security Officer uh, Rinky Seti was also fired following, quote, an assessment of how the organization was being led and impact on the top priority work. Let me see if they have anything else. Anyway, I think this background information is important because I, I think you need to understand this, that he was fired in January. Six months later, he does this whistleblower thing. Um it's an it's I feel ethically bound, said Zatko. This is not a light step to take. He declined to discuss what happened at Twitter except to stand by the formal complaint. Under SEC whistleblower rules, he is entitled to legal protection against retaliation as well as potential monetary rewards. However, he's not guaranteed to be believed, right? Everything is alleged and this would in you know, this begins an investigation. Mm -hmm. Casey Newton said uh, in the piece that he wrote um, that he heard from people you know, who were Mudge's fans, but he said, I had an equal number of people calling me and telling me, ah, but you can't use this story, and then telling him the stories about Mudge. Yeah. So he has his fans, he has his detractors, don't we all, but, yeah. but you know, uh, great of salt. Agrawal, the CEO, but says, uh, um, wait a minute, let me see. Let me, I want to get all of the whistleblower complaint in now, and then we'll talk about the Post merits, story summarizes it. the merits of it. Uh, oh, or, or, it says that thousands well, actually, of go ahead, go ahead, thousands go ahead. of employees still had wide ranging and poorly tracked internal access to the core company software. Remember that was part of the problem that allowed these that this hack uh, two years ago, a situation that for years led to embarrassing hacks, including the commandeering of accounts held by such high profile users as Elon Musk, Barack Obama, Obama, and Donald Trump. In addition, the whistleblower document alleges this is all from the Washington Post. The company prioritized user growth. Over reducing spam, are you surprised? Though unwanted content made the user experience worse. Uh, and he says it's because executives stood to win individual bonuses of as much as $10 million tied to increases in daily users, but no rewards for cutting spam. He says the CEO, Parag Agrawalar, was lying when he tweeted in May that the company was, quote, strongly incentivized to detect and remove as much spam as we possibly can. Um, Zako told the Post in an interview that he dis his decision to go public was an extension of his previous work, explose, exposing flaws in specific pieces of software. I felt ethically bound, said Zako. That's that's that quote. Um, a redacted version of the 84-page filing went to congressional committees. That's how the Post got it. So they got the redacted version. Zatko is represented by a nonprofit law firm called Whistleblower Aid. The FTC is also reviewing the allegations. So 
stirred up a hornet's nest. And and the chiefly among those, besides the fact that it lacks security, uh, was this whole thing about bots. And this is why I get a little suspicious, because apparently, according to the Post, Elon Musk, before the whistleblower uh, accusations, had subpoenaed Zotko to testify in the trial, which is coming up in Delaware in October. Uh, he, Zotko had accused Twitter of lying about bots to Elon Musk. <laughs> um, to me, that's pretty damn convenient. And very, can I explain the 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 um, Masnick? Angle yeah. So on this? Mike, so let's go now to Tector, where Mike Masnick's headline is: Twitter whistleblowing report actually seems to confirm Twitter's legal argument while pretending to support Musk's. Yeah, you better explain that. So uh, what what Mike explains in a Bible length uh, post. Uh, <laughs> And it goes into much, much detail, is that, um, number one, this still isn't a factor in the case because, again, let's not forget, Musk bought Twitter sight unseen. So yep. that rests over this. But but now Musk is out there trying to say, oh, but you're lying to the FTC about your spam bots, your, your spam uh, accounts. And then what- SEC, what not, Mike not FTC, okay. SEC. SEC, thank you. Um, and then what Mike explains, uh, details, um, is that uh, what's at it, what's it, a, a, issue here is, is Twitter's MDAOs, monetizable daily active users. And um, the MDAO is not a view of the entirety of Twitter. It is, they're telling the FTC, this is what we're telling advertisers of the people who might actually be human and could click on an ad. Uh, taking out spam, taking out legitimate good bots too, because they're not going to click. Uh, this is the monetizable daily active users. And yes, we've already cleared out the spam. We've already gone through all that. That number is post-spam reduction. It is post-spam reduction. And importantly, it's important to keep in mind that, that Mike points out, is that Twitter and their executives were very motivated to keep that number low because the higher number that number was, the, if they put it too high, the advertisers would say, well, your efficacy of your advertising is crap because the proportion mm -hmm. of people clicking well, is low. There's two so sides that to that story. Low. We deal with that right. all the time, too. Uh, right. You want to accurately report how many impressions an ad is going to get on your platform. But it's a so there and you get paid by the impression. Right. So. Yes. So, but they also look at your at your at, at, at how at efficient. return on investment. So if your yes. ads are too expensive regardless they're they're going to say well it costs too much to get too little result so right. i guess there it's true there is some incentive to not make that number too high but there's also incentive to make it higher because you make more money so you want to find the highest number you can get <laughs> that will not be like so high that they say well this isn't working uh, so honestly, what Mike the best argues, thing to do would be to say the actual number, but who knows? The actual number, which is yeah. what Mike says they're, they're actually trying to do and have he a methodology. He says Musk and confuses, has done is explains that exactly. Musk confuses yeah. the total number of spam bots on the platform with the ones Twitter, with the numbers Twitter's giving after, you know, in its MDAO report, which is right. what So what, what, what Twitter out. has warranted is that we've, we've done this. So what, and I, I lose Mike's logic a little bit here, but what he emphasizes is that what um, Mudge says backs up Musk actually backs up Twitter's case. And, and so he's just saying, and, 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 he, and Mike being Mike, bless his heart, gets just outraged at the media coverage because they just gobble up the Musk line on this well, and he, don't question it and don't analyze it. Yeah, they're not that subtle. They don't. Yeah, well, they're not, they don't yeah, they're not educated <laughs> on stuff, though. Yeah. No, not, and Mike no, is, who is would for expect sure. And we try to be educated and certainly educate our audience on this. Uh, remember, for the most part, companies don't report anything. MDAO is something Twitter made up. They report monthly active users, MAU, M-A-U, um, and, and, uh, and MDAO, or monthly day, or daily active users, DAO. Right. MDAO is monetizable users. In other words, a different number, lower number, that reflects the actual users that are seeing your ad that could buy your product. So... Uh, in fact, that's Mudge says this in his complaint. Until 2019, Twitter reported total monthly users, but stopped because the number was subject 
to negative swings for a variety of reasons, including like when they removing got rid of a bunch bots. Of bad accounts. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead, Twitter announced a new proprietary opaque metric they called monetizable daily active users to find as valid user accounts that might click through ads and actually buy a product. Um, yeah, that's, I understand why Twitter would do that. And as long as advertisers accept it, that's fine. There's no right. legal requirement to use that's monthly exactly. active users instead of month, instead of daily monetization. But I think Musk is trying to say that Twitter is defrauding people there and without the evidence, and in fact, what's happening is Twitter is saying, no, this is our methodology. We're explaining this to you many, many times, and yeah. you're choosing to be confused. And now you're using Mudge to try to enhance that confusion. But I think when it gets into court, that's not going to stand. So there's a few is also irrelevant to the, to the there's case. There's a few possibilities here. One is that I'm, Mudge is absolutely uh, up, forthright, honest, and is doing the right thing and is telling the world what Twitter's really up to and that they're not possible. secure and they're just pretending to be. There's also the opposite, uh, which is that he's a disgruntled employee because he was fired six months ago and well, perhaps so suborned well, by I Elon Musk, who thought, ah, here's somebody I can use as a witness in my trial, or perhaps just motivated by other reasons and isn't telling the truth. And I, the truth is, I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows, but exactly. just, just because he says it's so doesn't mean it's so, is I guess what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, but Could I say... here. He has a documented history at Twitter of being outspoken about security risks. And some of them are very real, like access to the servers or not having running unpatched versions of, was it Linux on the servers? Um, having employees have access to account credentialing stuff that they shouldn't after the hack. All of that is very real. And I can see if you are- Well, is it real? Person. Do we know it's real? Okay. If that is the case, then that makes- we don't know it's real. It it's verifi that probably he would verifiable. Say, in other yeah, words, in, in an investigation, we could probably find that out. But, but if you just would I be that, surprised it if it were hold, true that Twitter up. was kind of screwed up? No. <laughs> yeah. So hold up, though. If you are a, a security person, and there's a very like real persona that goes into security and you feel aggrieved, and then you're also going up against management who has no interest in listening or updating things that don't feel like, it, you know, remember, they're in crisis. In, in Six months ago, they were still in some sort of like, ah, how are we going to make money? What are we going to do? You know, so yeah. it, having some security guy come up, guys, guys, we have to do this. I can see why he got fired, right? I can also see how he is still a person who desperately cares about the security of something that journalists, activists, et cetera, use every day to try to like influence people. That's So that's you think scary. him being fired was justifiable because he raised awareness or attempted to raise awareness? Well, not justifiable, but it's understandable. Not, <laughs> I think he was probably, yeah, not diplomatic. And, yeah. and I say okay. this because I talked right. to lots of security people yeah. who probably – out of all the security researchers that I talk to, and I do talk to a lot, half of them mm -hmm. have left a job because they were frustrated with the way management treated their recommendations. Uh -huh. So not everybody goes and becomes a whistleblower, but a lot of management and a lot of companies takes what security company, it, they should. I mean, security folks are focused on security. Management's focused on security, profits, mm -hmm. you know, roadmaps right, right. and everything else. But the security persona is like the superhero. And when the superhero is like, I will save the day. And they're like, no, thank you. Then they're like, oh, you are wrong and evil. I will leave. But a lot of these people right. do leave. It's not that uncommon to see. I mean, it's they a common to be a little dogmatic, like, right, Stacey? I mean, yeah. they, 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 this is the right way. And when it's not, mm -hmm. um, uh, they they they're offended and maybe they and they should be but it's hard to compare all. I mean it's true you know in any field right teachers like will get mad when when people aren't don't respect our 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 scholarship time journalists get mad when somebody doesn't understand how hard the job is yeah it's it's we're all in our so blinders uh, uh, and I have I mean given where he's worked I have no reason to believe that uh, Zacho is anything but an honorable and talented person but there are questions why did he wait so long to file this complaint he was mm -hmm. fired in january maybe he was spooked by elon i mean think about it this way he wasn't secretive according to all the reporting inside twitter like he wasn't secretive about the issues he had with management's response to his recommendations so it could be that musk was like 
let's call this guy. Let's see what happens. And maybe Mudge was like, oh, crap, I don't want to be like a behind the scenes influence kind of thing. So he just brought everything into the open. Or uh, again, another theory. I don't know. Another theory is Jack brings in this guy. The guy messes everything up. Par Parag, who is a technology guy, uh, said he's, he's not helping. He's full of crap. Um, you're out of here now that I'm the boss. You know, you don't know the dynamics of, of, of the organization and, and, and you have a technology yeah. boss in Agarwal. Uh, and I think that that matters in this In, in this an interview. Uh, well, he, he's with, also calling Agarwal's baby ugly. I mean, if you built the technology yeah, infrastructure yeah, in this guy's yeah, life. Yeah, good point, hey. Stacey. <laughs> good point. I swear. I'm, I think, yeah, I'm surprised that's this really, didn't turn in. This, this, this didn't turn into another episode of um, Die Hard because I swear it sounds just like one of those movies, the one with uh, when Tim he Oliphant. when when uh, CNN when Donny <laughs> was a great Irish accent Donny O'Sullivan on uh, CNN asked him why did it take you so long? He said this Zach Coast said this wasn't my first choice this wasn't the path I wanted to take I exhausted all internal options that could explain the six okay. months like he Stress. tried to get it fixed. Uh, he tried to do it right, and uh, he finally got frustrated and said, look, i got to go public because Twitter's not going to fix this. Uh, so, you know, it, I, I, I'm, my only caution, it's just my instinct is, all right, let's not necessarily accept this uh, on its face. Yeah, I think you're, you're right now. Yeah. I want to see what the results of investigation are. It is, you're right, Jeff, completely believable. <laughs> yeah, 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 either way. It's not incredible. Uh, but let's sure. also not think this is going to have necessarily a legal impact on the case that everybody's talking about. And, no, and but it Musk could have a play. very big legal impact on Twitter because remember, they have an FTC dissent, consent decree. That's a separate not yes, to lie separate. about this stuff. And by the way, that's where Zacco could make some money because he would get a percentage of any judgment against Twitter as a reward for being a whistleblower. So, so if you're asking oh. what's his incentive, well, it could be because he, be he's a true believer, but there might be money in it. 